Okay, so we didn't get to Shallan's drawing yet. Next week? But otherwise, we learn some stuff. Today we'll be talking about the preview chapters 3 and 4 for Wind and Truth. If you haven't read them yet, they're linked in the description, as are the previous readings Brandon released of the same bits. Spoilers for absolutely everything. First, patrons! Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Meethy Carone, Gallant Aegis, and the son of James. If these videos are fun or helpful to you, consider joining my Patreon. So I totally missed the heading for last week's preview, presumably the name of part one, except it's day one. Are there going to be 10 parts in this book instead of the usual five? Or are most of the parts going to cover multiple days? Or is something going to happen on day five? Uh. Epigraphs. The wind is confirmed to be a lady, which the Spanish translation hinted at last week. And it talks about the change in Odium's vessel. So this is definitely not an ancient text. It seems this commenter on last week's video was right. Maybe the wind is literally just the wind. Still seems like these are being written by Caledon or Zeth. Chapter 3 is back at lasting integrity with Shallan, and boy do we get some juicy stuff here. Her mom hadn't liked that she'd bonded a spren, and had pulled a knife. I wonder why her mom would be concerned about a budding radiant, particularly since she already had ties to the Skybreakers. Hmm. Wit is talking on a cell phone, which you can hear on, but also see on. <laughs> Windrunners are coming to collect everybody from Shadesmar to get ready for the contest of champions. The general consensus is that Dalinar will choose himself, which probably means he won't. I don't know. Brandon does sneaky things. Shallan's not worried, but at least wary of the Ghostbloods after having declared war on them. Have we ever heard the actual reason why they tried to kill Yasna? Kalak was part of the mission to capture Mishram. Probably not as a herald, but just as some dude who secretly was a herald. They trapped her in a Heliodor, and Milishi, the same bondsmith that made the force field for the sibling, hid her in the spiritual realm. Somehow? Pattern speculates that the Ghostbloods want Mishram in order to bond the singers again? Which seems unlikely. What do you think the Ghostbloods want the Unmade for? If she can provide forms of power to an entire species through connection, could she maybe change the connection of a certain cognitive shadow to their planet? Whatever happens in this book has to occur before Lost Metal, meaning the Kelsier we see there has already either accomplished or failed at whatever is going on. Unless it got punted down the road to the second arc of Stormlight, which I doubt. Maya's gotten significantly more talkative, which is cool. She says she heard the Radiance would destroy the world, which was only possible because humans no longer had honor. The shard, not the attribute. Well... But she hasn't said, at least on screen, how that was going to happen. Also, it seems like someone taking up the splintered honor might be important. Nominations? Then, chapter four. Kaladin has a meeting with Dalinar, but first, wit. He's reading An Accountability of Virtue, the romance novel the Ardent was reading in that Oathbringer interlude. The sequel apparently explores a love triangle between Wima, the protagonist of the first book's sister, a Thalen naval officer, and the king's wit. Hoid. Life following art following la- Cal wishes he had someone to take notes for him during his conversations with Wit. I got you. He's got another flute, this time painted red. Is it from Cell? Specifically, Fjordan? It doesn't have the same capacity as the one Kaladin has, which sounds important. Where is that first flute from? Wit teaches Kaladin how to play, and Syl comes in saying, I know that song. This was not in the last reading Brandon did. Kaladin just learned one of the rhythms of Roshar made into a song with the tones of the gods. Whoa! The same is the song of the Wandersail, which apparently echoed when Kaladin heard it because the wind played it back. It's also the same rhythm that guided humanity from Ashen to Roshar. Does the story of the Wandersail have any parallels to the destruction of Ashen? I'm gonna have to think about that. Also, apparently the old magic predates the Shattering? Cultivation co-opted a primordial spren to become the Night Watcher we know and love. The wind was also one of those? Wit's talking like one of them won't survive, though we know he does, which means Kaladin. Syl brings up the passions, which is another significant deviation from Brandon's original reading. I know in writing, as in every other creative endeavor, sometimes you have to kill your darlings, but 
there were some nuggets of gold left on the cutting room floor here. My favorite, wit talking about manifesting. They're all the same. Deliberate, pernicious lies devised by powers who know their success was due to luck at best, crass exploitation and larceny at worst. So they have to invent some kind of moral rationalization, a lie that lets them think they deserve what they have. Then, after inhaling their own stench long enough, they decide to package and sell it. And when it doesn't work for anyone else, well, they have the ultimate excuse. It isn't the idea that is flawed. You just don't care enough. Sure, you make your own luck, but a lot of success really is just luck. Being ready for opportunity, creating opportunity, and then taking advantage of it. Speaking of, I'm a voice actor, hire me. Back to the story. A great reference to Sazed, who Hoyd hasn't met yet? It's been a minute. When Wit says Kaladin has to march off to his divine destiny, how divine are we talking? Wit repeats the fandom theory that Kaladin is inventing therapy. And again, I feel like Brandon cut some significant things here. Wit originally told Cal, you'll win when you don't play music with your own breath and when you fight without your own muscles. Play the flute, but don't. And fight, but don't. There's significance to that, and I think perhaps more significance to it being removed. Speaking of significant things being removed, Wit says something is horribly wrong, has been for several days, and he can't figure out what it is. Absolutely talking about his encounter with the new Odium and the excision of breath where he was storing memories. Yeah, we're freaked out about it too. <laughs> Of course, that happened at the end of Rhythm of War, which I'm working on a full recap video for for next week. If you want a more in-depth, spoilery review before then, check out my Cosmere Connection series. In the meantime, read and find out. Wit is talking on a cell phone. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's such a stupid joke. <laughs> I love it, though.